Hello, this is David Ferguson from MLC CAD Systems, and what I will be demoing for you today is how to program a simple contour uh, for a wire or EDM style of machine. So what I have on my screen right now is a, a simple plate part. It's about a half inch thick and just about four inches square, and we've got some negative spaces uh, that we need to go ahead and machine out uh, using an EDM style of machine. So in my levels manager, I've gone ahead and I've created some wireframe geometry based off the solid model I was given. And then in addition to that, when I turn off the solid part, you can see I've also gone ahead and I've created uh, three thread points uh, for my EDM toolpaths. Now in truth, we're actually only going to be programming this far left negative space and then transforming it to the other two. So I actually only need this initial thread point here, but we'll leave these two here uh, just for examples there. They're not going to get in the way, uh, but we don't need to delete them. Okay. So I'm going to turn my solid back on for a moment and I'm going to go over to my toolpath manager and I'm going to go ahead and go into my stock setup for just a generic uh, EDM machine and I'll just basically define my stock. My part is sitting positive Z so I'm going to go ahead and move my stock origin there to the bottom and I'll just go ahead and select the entities to define my stock and then as I like to do I typically tend to not display that stock when it's on the screen. Okay and I'm going to go ahead and turn off that solid while I'm working so I can see the wireframe clearly. And for my wire tool paths, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use a contour. Uh, this is kind of the jack of all trades for EDM. You can do a lot of fun stuff with it. So we'll grab a contour. And the first thing I'm asked to do, or the first thing I need to do when I'm chaining for EDM, is if I'm using a thread point, I do have to point that out to the chain manager. So I'm going to set myself up here for a point style chain. I'm just going to select that first thread point there. And then an EDM specific thing you tend to do or can do, I'm going to go ahead and click on the options button and I'm going to choose to go ahead and break the closest entity to that thread point. So if this is an unbroken line, Mastercam will actually split that up for me. So my entry and exit will be at the start uh, of that br newly broken entity. So they'll happen where the thread point happens. So that's this button right here, break closest entity to a thread point. And once that's done, I'll go ahead and green check there and I'll set myself up for uh, uh, a closed chain. And we'll go ahead and we'll do uh, a clockwise chain around the inside of that. And I'll just go ahead and green check to open up the toolpath parameters. Now I'm going to go ahead and go initially first to what they call the wire power library page and I'm going to check this button to associate to a specific power library and then I'm going to use this exclamation point to go ahead and select the library I want to use and for me it's going to be one I created earlier referred to as the cam wire. So I'll go ahead and select that guy and this is basically a, a two pass so I've got two cuts going on in there, cuts one and two. We'll go ahead and select that. And let's see, we'll go next down to our cut parameters page and we'll go and allow it to do a rough cut and I'll do one additional what you would call a skim cut, so I'll put that in there. Uh, I'd like to do a tab if I can and a uh, number of tab cuts will be one and tab width is fine at point one. And I don't believe I need, I'll let it go ahead and do it automatically. Uh, I can also use a manual and square point just like I would in a regular contour. Uh, I don't need to do a skim cut, but I do want to reverse the cut of that last pass. So my, my tab cutoff will be a reversed cut. So I'll be going the opposite direction, but still comping to the correct side. That's not a problem. Um, speaking of compensation, I'm going to go ahead and leave it set to um, automatic and control. And then under stops, I'm going to go ahead and say when it does do a stop before that tab, we'll do that as what you call a glue stop, which basically makes it an optional stop. Okay. Uh, and then I need to go down to uh, my leads. So I'll go ahead and go to my lead page. And we're doing a line only and a line only for lead out. And I do want to do a max lead out value with a little bit of overlap. And I'll go ahead and just do both of those at say let's do 50 thou. That's a pretty pretty middle of the road sort of value. Uh, and then I'm going to go down to where it says taper, which doesn't only cover tapers or wall tapers, which we're not using, but it also handles basically my, my linking parameters for this style of toolpath. So what I need to do there is just go ahead and look and say my rapid height is at one inches. 
and that's fine. I'm positive Z, so that's good. My UV trim plane, I'm going to bring that a little closer to the top of the part. And then my UV height will actually be my sort of top of stock value, so that'll be 0.5. Uh, then I've got an XY height, I'm going to leave that at 0. And then an XY trim plane, I'm going to go ahead and actually go ahead and make that negative 0.1. And that'll just put the, uh, the wire, uh, the end point of the wire, uh, 100 thou below the bottom of the part. And actually, that is all I need to do for that. So I've got a, a power library, some basic cut parameters, uh, comp style, how I'm treating stops, uh, my lead in and lead out, and just like you normally would, uh, my, my linking parameters, my Z heights for everything. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply it and then green check to generate that toolpath. And then in EDM, it always sort of shows you the chains post, which is kind of strange. Uh, but I'll go ahead and green check. Those chains look good. Uh, and then there is my, my EDM toolpath, and that looks pretty, pretty good. Looks like what I was looking for. So the next thing I'd like to do real quick is just grab that single toolpath and hit transform toolpath. And we'll just go ahead and make two additional copies of that toolpath over in my X axis. So uh, this would be a translate uh, by NCI. So I'm translating a toolpath. Uh, I've only got the one toolpath, so that's selected right there, wire contour. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose to copy those source operations and, and ghost out that initial op and just fold it into the second uh, transformed ops. And once that's selected, I'm going to go to my translate page and we'll just do a rectangular method. Uh, I could also use just a delta method, but rectangular would work here. Uh, I need a total of three in X and only one in Y. So that's three and one there. And then my delta for X, I'm just going to go ahead and right click here in that field, grab an S value distance between two points, and I'm going to check, say, this point and this point, and that gives me a delta of 1.1, uh, positive X, which is what I'm looking for. And since I'm not doing anything in Y, I don't need any uh, delta. I, this could be zero. It could also be left as one. That's fine. And pretty much as soon as I go ahead and green check, I should get two additional copies of that toolpath right there. And what I'd like to do now is just check that and verify and just see if I'm getting all three wire toolpaths as I'm expecting them. So I'm just going to go ahead and select my op here. This has been ghosted, so just that transform. I'll go ahead and open up my verify, and hopefully we'll be seeing what we're expect to see seeing. Okay, so you can see we've got our wire elements above and below. And like I say, if I slow this down because they do go kind of quick, I should see... those toolpaths transformed out. And that's looking about what I'd expect. So I'll just go ahead and turn off the tool here real quick, and then I'll use the Verify tab option of removing chips to remove the unwanted material from Verify so I can get a, a good look at the parts left over. And there are my three widgets programmed pretty quickly and efficiently just using a, a simple contour and then a transform element. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.